Okay, so I've just now gone through my uh, Y 2D reconstruction slices and tagged pretty much all of the parts of this commosal that were touching the denary bone with this tag number one, as you see, right? It's not complete, but wherever you get denary bone coming close to the squamosal, you can see it's green, yeah? Now what I hope this is gonna enable us to do now is we return to our, our 3D preview, and you can see pretty much what I've done here. You know, I have to make sure to hit update. Right, and I, you know, I did this during, while I um, took a brief video break, but there it is, and everything that's touching now, I can get rid of through a couple strategies. First of all is to make the transfer function a bit more picky on the low end, so I increase that a little bit. And you see the bone shrinks a little so that the less dense pixels disappear. And now I unclick tag one, click inside my 3D, 3D preview window, and voila, all that I've tagged with one now disappears. So hopefully I have now isolated the whole uh, lower jaw from other parts of the skull. Now there's one more important strategy to help us with this, and it's a bit less labor intensive. So I'm in my 3D preview window. Now I hit B for bounding box, and I drag these, um, these anchor points. And just by doing that, I can get rid of lots of the skull, and tags will not go beyond this box, right? So I, I only want the jaw in this case, so I can just make it nice and lean and get the edges of the box close to the edges of the jaw, right? So there's another axis, and then I can finally get rid of some, get rid of this, some of this stuff on top. And so that's going to also help limit the, the extent to which these pixels with tag number three can, uh, can fill, right? The point is we don't want them to, to go outside of this lower jaw region. Okay, now one more trick. So I don't know if I mentioned already, but Drishti unfortunately doesn't have an undo, but it's not the end of the day because this file, um, the mask file, contains pretty much all of the changes. Whenever you segment anything, whenever you use Drishti Paint, the changes are saved in this mask file. I mean, that's it doubles the, it is always the same size as the original uh, rendered 001 file that you created with Trishti import. So just to make sure we've saved everything, I'm just going to save work. And there it is. And now what I want to do, in case something goes wrong, and when I hit, I, if I do hit fill and maybe I missed a pixel or two and it tags everything, Trishti will automatically save all of that. And I want to just ratchet my way up here with the segmentation. So it's really easy. I just go and I control C right, or I'll just do it with the mouse as well. I copy that mask file, and I'll just move up a, a directory and paste it into this, um, just one directory up, and there it is. So that means if something goes wrong, I have this mask file to fall back on, right? So I'm still writing to this one, and the, the one I just copied is a, is a backup. Okay, so now I've already unclicked my tag one, Right, there it is. You'll see that green disappear when I unclick it. To be extra sure, what we can do is hide all tags, and then you click here and everything disappears. And the tag, you know, the source of all these pixels is tag zero by default. And then the lower jaw, I want to use tag three, so I click on that. So those are the only two um, sources of pixels now. And I click anywhere in the, in the 3D preview box, and here you have it. So now the moment of truth is upon us. Maybe I can make it a little more conservative and rank up, ramp, ramp up a little bit. The transfer function, let's go to 95. And now I'm going to hit F for fill. And I have to make sure, yep, current tag is 3. So I click on that just to make sure. Now I'm going to hit F. And it's going to tell me it's going to fill everything that's in the connected region with this current tag value, 3. Right? 
I'm going to hit OK, and, and it's going to work. Let's see if it works. Voila. Not bad, huh? So you can see now, I, none of the skull is, has tag 3. So what I can do now is click on 0, and here's my occlusal view of the lower jaw. Now, it's missing a lot of the zero pixels inside of the jaw, you know. And you can tell that by mo moving the transfer function back down. Let's move it down to 78. And you can see it's become a lot more grainy. Um, and we, you know, we're missing some data now, right? So none of these pixels here are part of tag 3, but we can improve that. We have to be very careful, though, because, of course, the lower you put this transfer function, the greater the likelihood becomes that there's going to be some stray pixel that connects the lower jaw with the rest of the skull. So it's already, you may have noticed, it saved it right away. I'll just double check. I'll save it again. And I've gotten to a point where I can ratchet up my backup file. So I'm going to copy this mask again. I'm going to go up a directory and paste it here because I've made progress. I'll replace the file in the destination, go back to my Drishti window. And there's another helpful key. And this is D for dilate. And it's a little fussy because you have to be right over a pixel that matches the, the pixels you want to dilate. So when I filled, it was the lower transfer function was way up around 95. I've now reduced that somewhere in the 70s. Let's make it 85. And now I want to dilate. So I'm going to click in that region, hit D, and it's going to basically you see that? So it now got a little smoother, right? And fortunately, it didn't leak into the into the skull, right? So I even got the condyle there. So this is good now. This is good. So what I'm going to do now is um, it's it's going to be much easier now. I'm going to tag the rest of the skull and let's let's get rid of my lower jaw. So I unclick three and that lower jaw disappears. Now I click on one, and that little bit um, of the jaw joint that I had previously clicked on here, now it appears, right? So the only tags, the only pixels showing up are either under tag zero, which was the original CT scan, or tag one, which is what I did to separate out the jaw joint. I, I'm afraid it's not going to spread very far because it's not very... Um, you know, it's just on that little bit of the jaw. So what I want to do is current tag one, click on it. I'll zoom in. I'll get some more uh, pixels here. I'll shift, so I'm holding on the shift key. And now I'm going to left mouse click. And I just drag this, um, this cursor. And you can see the green tag, tag number one, is now going where I tell it to on the upper teeth and the maxilla. And that might be enough. And so I'm going to move up my lower um, transfer function, let's say to 90, 91. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the jaw. Remember that I've, I've unchecked tag 3 here. And the only pixels that are going to get picked up now that are continuous with tag 1 are those that are were in the original CT scan. Um, and so now current tag one, I'm going to hit F for fill. And let's let's see what happens. I've already backed up, right? So my mask file is backed up somewhere else. So if something goes wrong, I, I, I won't lose all this work. So I hit F for fill. And it's telling me I'm just going to, uh, the current tag value one, yep, that's fine. I hit OK. And yeah, it didn't do very much because it's not finding the connected regions between these different regions that are that are supposed to have tag one. So I'm just going to drag this a bit more robustly and connect the two regions. Yeah, you know what's wrong is that I need to make my bounding box a bit less restrictive. Let's give them a whole brain case. Move that up, get the back of the brain case as well. I don't want to have to do this whole thing again with the with the left side of the jaw. So let's just do one half of the of the brain case. Right? So now what I can do is I hit B again to get rid of the bounding box. I'll try and connect these regions here with my current tag one. Shift, left click, 
trace all that, and let's try that again. F for fill, current tag value, and let's see how we go, how it works. Yeah, so now I've got the skull part saved. Of course, you'll notice that these incisors up here aren't saved. I, I can't do a rodent skull without the incisors. I forgot. So it should be able to catch this even though, because that should reasonably be uh, recognized. So I'm just going to hit um, F for fill again. And it's still on tag one, so that's fine. So hopefully it'll pick up the incisors now as well without me having to manually do everything. And there they are, right? So uh, hopefully future versions of Drishti won't necessarily automatically save because that does make things tricky. You have to remember to save your mask because if it does go wrong, it will save it, right? And your mask file will be overwritten with some mistake. But in this case, it looks like we're fine. So if I now show all tags, you'll see that I've got my lower jaw with tag three, my skull in tag one, that's green, uh, three is blue. And there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's extracting both of these regions, right? So let's start with the jaw. So the first thing to do is to make the bounding box something that's a, that, that fits, right? So I'm going to hide all tags except for the jaw tag, which was three. And then I, I close in the edges of my bounding box. Looks like I had a little bit of the of the uh, other half of the jaw, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so that'll do for now. And now what I can do is file and extract tag region, right? This is just the jaw. I don't want all tags, so I, I just type in number three, corresponding to this blue color for the tag for the lower jaw. I hit OK. And I only want the tag. Yep, I accept that default. And I'm just going to call this... Marionis, my Mongolian dribble, lower jaw. And it'll automatically add the suffix. I hit OK, and it's extracting the tag region. And notably, because I defined the bounding box, which covers a much smaller volume than the whole skull, or at least a somewhat smaller volume, you'll see that I've uh, the size of that file is a lot smaller. It's only it's 250 megs as opposed to 1.4 gigs. That's because the bounding box was much smaller. Yeah. So in the next video, I will now I will then show you the the program that I use the most to make publication quality figures, which is not Drishti Paint. It's just called Drishti. So thanks again for listening.